Hi, and welcome. I'm Darcy Crow, and this is my colleague and fellow senior investment advisor, Kathy Sager. Thank you for joining us today. This is our fourth installment of Ask the Expert, which is designed to hit on those topics that may not come up in your day-to-day -day lives. So as always, we hope that the content within these webinars is useful information for you to really empower you in the financial decisions that you're making in your life. So today we're going to be talking about charitable gifting. So this is a conversation that comes up frequently with clients when we get towards end of calendar year. Uh, so something that we wanted to just address some questions that we've been receiving from clients and provide some useful information for you. Many of us have causes that we hold dear. The desire to help others hopefully comes naturally, yet knowing how to make a difference through the various options available can sometimes be less clear. Mike Todd is the Director of Charitable Investment Programs at Charitable Impact. Charitable Impact allows philanthropically minded individuals and companies to be as strategic with their giving as they are with their investments. Mike has extensive experience at the intersection of philanthropy and wealth management and currently serves as Chair of the Leave a Legacy Program of the Canadian Association of Gift Planners. Welcome, Mike, and thank you for joining us and our clients and viewers today. Great. Thanks, Kathy. Darcy, it's a pleasure to be here. Fantastic. So today what we're hoping to cover, um, we wanted to go over various ways of gifting as well as the tools and platforms that uh, may be available for people to take to make use of. Uh, tax implications, of course, are always top of mind for people. So we wanted to sort of analyze some of the differences in the various ways of gifting and the, impl and the tax implications of that. Uh, and then we also wanted to hit on, you know, donating at different points in your life uh, and how to ultimately leave, leave a legacy. Perhaps we could start by asking about the various methods of supporting the organizations and causes that we do hold dear. For example, I'm fiercely passionate about animal rescue. So beyond simply writing a check or donating at a fundraiser, are there more effective manners to lend support? Oh, that's great. What a great question. And, and it's funny you say that, Kathy. I've got two dogs just outside the door. They're both rescues. So <laughs> good for you, they Mike. Behave themselves. Hopefully they behave themselves, but uh, there you go. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And, you know, I, I always say there are good ways to give and there are better ways to give. There's no bad ways to give. So when somebody approaches you and you get out the checkbook and write them a check, you know, there's no reason to feel bad about that. But I do think sometimes, depending on um, the amount we're talking about, depending on your own financial situation, there may be a more effective way to give. And that's something that we can get into a little bit. And that, that would be with donating shares. But beyond that, um, don't, also, don't overlook the, the real gift of time as well. When you're, and as you said, you're passionate about something, you might want to be involved with your time as well as your checkbook or your investment account. Yeah, fantastic. I think those are some some really great points to 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 think about. Um, so so you work with Charitable Impact. So can we talk specifically about you know what is Charitable Impact? Who are you working with? And you know how are you helping you know donors make an impact? And 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 how you work with them. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Charitable Impact, the, the technical answer is we're a, a social enterprise operation that functions as a donor advised fund. Now, uh, what's the donor advised fund? We can talk about that as well. But the, the it, and it's, a, it's an effective giving tool that allows people to donate assets they have today, get the tax benefit today, and then make decisions about which charities to support tomorrow, the next day, the next year, and, and ideally for the rest of your life. So that, that's what a donor advised fund is. But with Charitable Impact in particular, our, our purpose really is, is to help people create the change that they want to see in the world. And it sounds kind of uh, lofty, but it, it really is. We have three beliefs that we hold dear. That is that we all have something in the world that we want to see changed. And I've, I've said that to people who have said, oh, I'm not sure about that. And then I probe a little deeper and it turns out, yes, they do. There is something that they want to see change in the world. I also believe we all have something to give. And that's not, as I said earlier, just to do with money. And here's a third point that's kind of interesting. And that is when we give, we get something in return. And I, I've also said that to people who kind of looked at me funny and said, well, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that. But the truth is, some of us are going to get that warm, fuzzy feeling because we've supported that charity, that cause that's so dear to us all the way to the other extreme, which is some of us are gonna get the tax receipt and that's gonna be beneficial as well. So I really do believe that's true. 
So those are the three core beliefs that we have at Charitable Impact and keep us doing what we're doing. Uh, we have a, a technology platform, so it's very efficient, very effective. It's online, uh, very little work for the people who use it and uh, a donor advised fund, as I said, but that, that's really at the heart of who we are is, is wanting to help people make that change that they see in the world that they want to, they want to see something different. Thank you, Mike. Could you tell us a little bit more about the various ways of giving and the tax benefits and implications of stock donation versus handing out money? And maybe you could give us an example of the two situations. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. As I said earlier, uh, very often when we think about charitable giving, we're thinking about a check. And again, nothing wrong with that. So we, we write a check, we hand it out. The thing to keep in mind is like almost everything we spend in, in, in our lives, it's after tax dollars. So I've earned this money and now I've written a check and I'm giving it to a charity and I'm gonna get a tax receipt for that. And that's gonna be very beneficial for my taxes. Really, it depends on where you live, but you get a substantial portion of that charitable gift back on your tax return when you when you claim that tax receipt. And so that's important. And we have a couple of examples that we can we can give in a minute. So uh, that's that's giving a gift of uh, a check. It's cash, but when you write a check, the perhaps better way to give, again, depending on your circumstances, is to donate securities or stocks or mutual funds that you might own. And, and there's a very important reason why that may make sense. You're, all, you're still gonna get that tax receipt regardless. So it's the same math, you'll get that tax receipt for making that donation, that the same numbers you would have got for giving a check, you're gonna get for giving stock. But if that security has appreciated over time, ultimately when you either sell that or when you sell that, you're going to owe the government some capital gains tax. You're gonna owe them tax on the difference between what you paid for the security and what it's worth today. So, you know, that's great. It went up. And that, I mean, that's that's why uh, why you do what you do and, and your clients are going to be happy that the stock went up. But there may be some capital gains owed on that. However, if you donate the securities, as we say, in kind, which means don't sell it, but actually donate the securities itself, which is very easy to do. You're going to get that tax receipt and you're also going to. And the way I describe it is you're going to eliminate the capital gains tax that you would otherwise owe on that stock. The accountants will be frowning at this point in time because it's a more complicated explanation than that. But the end result is you do not own any capital gains, owe any capital gains tax on that stock if you donate it in kind. As I said, it's a very important point. I remember some years ago I was with a, a, a different firm and I received a phone call from a donor who was very excited and said, listen, I just sold and it was a, it was a large donation. I just sold some stock and I'm going to send you a check. And I thought, wow, that's great. But we could have done it better if you'd actually donated the stock. So if you have securities and if they're worth more than you paid for, and if you if it's the choice between writing a check or giving those securities away, most often it makes more sense to give the security. Okay, fantastic. And I think we've got a couple of slides just to walk through some numbers on there. Sure. Um, so maybe we'll just use go through a bit of an example just so people can get a sense of what that might look like. Sure. I'm, I'm uh, using BC numbers here. So this is, for instance, it's a $25,000 donation. This is if you wrote a check. And uh, let me let me just hedge this a little bit by saying everybody's situation is a little bit different. So don't take these numbers as being exact for you, but it gives you a good idea. So you've written a check to a charity for $25,000 and it works out the same if it's $25 or, or 2500 You notice that I'm pointing out the tax credit on the first $200. In Canada, the government allocates a different amount of tax credit for the first 200 than anything above. And it's it's actually lower on the first $200 that you give away per year. And that's because the government is encouraging us to give more. So on the first $200, I get a tax credit of $40 and some change. And then above that, I'm gonna get a tax credit of over $10,000. So you can see that the after tax cost of donation. So in other words, when I claim my receipt, on my tax return, I'm actually gonna get credit for having already paid $14,000 in taxes. And it, it's, so this is critical. And this is, as I said, if you wrote a check. So it's a great number. And as I said earlier, there's no bad ways to give. This, this is great. However, I think the next slide talks about doing the same thing, but with securities. A little more complicated, a few more numbers on the page. Don't let that throw you off. Let me, let me explain what we've got here. On the left side, 
if we sell the security, and remember, remember I, I kind of let the cat out of the bag. I said earlier, don't do that, but let's go through the numbers anyway. Uh, you've got a adjusted cost base, sorry for the jargon, but that just means what you paid for the security. So you pay $12,500, it's worth 25,000 today. So you have a capital gain. In other words, it's gone up by $12,500. And so the taxable gain on that is over $6,000 at my tax rate or, or somebody's tax rate of 45%, we're gonna owe a little more than $2,800 in tax. So it's great, you made the donation, that's beautiful, but you, you've still gotta pay a little bit of capital gains on those shares because you sold them, not because you gave them away. Fast forward to the, to the right side, and you can see the same $2,500 donation, you see the same cost base, you see the same uh, capital gain, However, in this case, because we've donated those shares in kind, there is no a capital gains tax owed. So effectively, and you know, it, this doesn't mean that the government hands you $2,800, but you've avoided paying $2,800 in tax. So much more effective ways. So put those two together. The previous slide, you got that tax credit for giving $25,000 to a charity. And now we see that by donating securities, instead of selling them, and giving cash, you're actually saving a little bit more in capital gains. So regardless of how you make a donation, you get that tax credit. However, if you give securities that have gone up in value, then you're also going to save some capital gains. So it's a little bit of a, a, a double dip, if you will. And, and if you've got those securities, as I said earlier, obviously speak with you, speak with your professional advisor, see if it makes sense, but you're gonna save money if you donate securities as opposed to just writing that check. Okay, fantastic. I think that's uh, Thanks, a, a great explanation. Um, and just going back in terms of both that topic and, and you know, tax considerations, I know we worked together with a, a client of mine who obviously had a large tax bill in a given year, you know, wanted to make a, a you know, a large donation, but over time and, uh, you know, a donor advice fund was a really great solution to ensure you had the tax write off for that year, uh, but got to, you know, make those donations over a period of, period of time. So it's certainly both in terms of the benefits uh, of, of timing it uh, and the tax advantages was, was a really fantastic way to, to go about that. Um, so we, we do have a lot of conversations with clients um, about when they should be donating. So what are some of the considerations that people mm -hmm. should think about uh, when, do, when they're deciding, you know, when a majority of their gifting should take place? Yeah, it's an interesting question. It, it, it's, um, I, I have a, a sermon that I sometimes launch into, and I'm going to try to avoid doing that with you. But um, the fact of the matter is that most Canadians, we're, we're very generous people, but we generally give when we're asked. And one of the things we're trying to do at Charitable Impact is, is change that. So I would suggest that if you are a charitably minded person and you have some of those causes that are near and dear to your heart, or quite honestly, if you're just one of those people who would like to avoid some taxes if you can, uh, I would consider giving when you have the assets to give. And obviously that's a plug for a donor advised fund because it allows you to do that. So. Um, if I have a significant gain in my stock portfolio this year, I might be wise to consider putting some of that into a donor advised fund today, capturing those gains in with a bigger tax receipt, avoiding some of the taxable ca capital gains that we spoke of earlier. And then I'm going to think about where I'm actually going to disperse those funds to over the next X number of years. So rather than give only when we're asked, I would suggest that we should think about giving when we have the assets to give and, and when it would make more sense. And Darcy, as you said, you know, we, we, we've done some work together on, on this. And when you've got clients who have a significantly higher tax year and maybe they've sold a business or they've exercised some options or whatever the case may be, and they know they're going to be giving away money over the next decade, it may make sense to make that donation today get that tax receipt, offset some of those tax issues. And in effect, you're pre-funding your giving for the next X number of years. So um, give when you've got it to give, give when it may actually make sense as part of your financial plan. And that may be a new concept for some people because giving is such a deeply personal thing and it really is. However, when you've made that decision to give, let's, let's suggest that it should be professionally managed and it should be part of your financial plan overall. 
And so you're going to end up doing it much more effectively, much more efficiently, and probably you're going to have more money to give away. So that's that, there's that, that uh, duality of it all. It's very, very personal. But once you've made that decision, let's make it very, very professional. Like what about the clients who wish to have a legacy gift? Like they want to leave something to be remembered by. Mm -hmm. uh, what would your recommendations be for those people? Yeah, that's, that's, that's such an interesting one. There's many different ways to go about that. Uh, and, and as you mentioned at the outset, Kathy, I, I chair the Leave a Legacy Committee. So the, the word legacy is something that's important to me and, and something I spend a lot of time thinking about. Uh, some stats, first of all, and you know, stats are, are what they are, but this is interesting. 82% was the last number I saw. 82% of Canadians say that they made a charitable contribution in the last year. 5% say that they are remembering a charity in their will. And that's quite a disparity. So the first thing I would say is if you have a cause that's or causes that are important to you, think about or consider leaving a gift to them in your will. And that can be done, as I said, in many different ways. You can just, you can make an allocation to a charity. Uh, you can have your executor write a check, whatever the case is. However, I think there's also a way to bring this into the same conversation that we've been talking about here where I've been using a donor advised fund, for example, as part of my tax planning tool. I've been giving uh, assets into the fund uh, as it made sense. I've been sending some of them to charity throughout my lifetime. Uh, ideally, because uh, you've been managing those assets and they continue to grow, there should be assets left over and, and uh, available to give away after my passing. And so I would start now I would give during my lifetime, I would get that taste. And I would also involve my family. If I had family members that I wanted to teach about philanthropy, I would involve them. And then I would make sure that there was a, there was something in my will uh, that my family understood what my intentions were and that uh, that could continue to take place over time after I go. You could send it all to a charity, but I would suggest that you, you uh, put one of your children in charge and they continue to suggest gifts over time. And that just continues. It goes on and on and on. It's like it's like a, the gift that keeps giving. And as you said, uh, and as I said, I love that word. It's a legacy. Fantastic. And I, and I like the, the thoughts around the family. You know, we get questions a lot of like, how can I involve, you know, children in terms of family values and, and you know, it's starting them involved with money and finance um, at a, an early age or earlier age perhaps, and they might be involved. Uh, and we do find whether it's, you know, the charitable give, gifting or the uh, donor advice funds can be a really, really great way to start those conversations and to share the family values. So that's, I think that's a really, a really great point. So um, to, to finish things off, you know, We've talked about, you know, giving is truly such a personal thing. Everyone has the, those causes that are near and dear to their heart. So given that you're so close, you, you speak to so many charities and donors and families about their gifting. What do you think are some of the, you know, the key questions to, to frame or, and, and the dialogue for, for someone who wants to give, you know, have the causes that are near and dear, um, want to make a difference, but may not know, you know, where to start? Mm -hmm. yeah, great question. We, we, as you said, we talk to all sorts of people and some of them come to us and they know exactly what they care about. They know exactly which charities to support. They just need our help. Others are anywhere from, you know, I care about the environment, but I don't know which charity to give to all the way to, I just think the world's a mess and I need to do something. I have no idea what. So the, the, the key is to ask just a couple of questions. And I think there are some really important ones. I said earlier, I said at the outset that one of the core beliefs at Charitable Impact is we all want something to change in the world. So I would ask that question. And, and I've done this where people, and I said, you know, what is the thing in the world that you would like to see changed? And some people still struggle with that. So I go on to say, well, when you're watching the news or, you know, nobody watches the news anymore. When you're, when you're scrolling the news, what's the thing that catches your attention? What's the thing that you pause on? What's the thing that makes you feel sad? that could be a clue that this is something that you you really care about and this this could be the change you want to see in the world and it's very very likely that there are charities doing work in that area another question is what, what are the things you talk about with your friends and with your family as you're watching the news perhaps or as you're discussing you know what's going on in, in the world when you talk to them what, what is it you're talking about is it uh, mental health issues has that hit your family is that something that's important to you there are charities out there doing great work in that field 
Is it poverty? Are you are you in the Starbucks and you're looking at the uh, the homeless person walking down the street? Does that bother you? Is that is that what you're talking about with your friends? Again, great charities doing work in that field. And then I would I would as we as we hopefully hone in on an issue, I would narrow it down a little bit and say, you know, it, what's what's the age range? Are you concerned about kids and um, in foster care? Are you concerned about animals? Kathy, this is something that's important to us. Uh, if so, it's dogs, cats. I mean, it sounds like a crazy question, but we're trying to help people hone in on the charities that they care about. What kind of animals is you concerned about? And with us, it's it's dogs. And then I would narrow it down again is location. Are you concerned about what's going on in the other side of the world that you're reading about? Or is it in your right in your community or somewhere in between? And here's an interesting one people don't often consider. Would you want to support a large charity that people are familiar with and are really, really good at what they do? Or would you prefer to, to support a smaller charity that just struggles to do their work, but is doing such amazing work? And so size, location, type, these are all questions that we can ask to try and narrow in on what's that thing that you wish was different? Okay, fantastic. Well, I think that's a great place to leave things off and uh, leaves our viewers absolutely some really great questions to be thinking about as we come into year end. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much for that. And of course, Kathy and I are available here for anyone who might want to talk about uh, charitable gifting. And we can certainly assist in terms of, you know, making it the most effective way as, as we talked about so that the, the, the gifting dollars go as far as possible. And of course, we include uh, charitable impact as a platform and tools there wherever, wherever we can as well integrated with our wealth management practice thank you so much mike for your time we appreciate it and thank you to the audience we also appreciate you very much and we're happy to encourage any questions any areas of interest that you might have ask the expert is an excellent chance for you to have access to some pretty great minds without having to go to an office or commit to an appointment we have them here for you so please feel free to send your questions into us at sager and crow Com and give us a call if you'd like to chat. We're at, uh, what is our number? 604-643-0141. Look forward to hearing from you, and thanks again for your time today. Thanks very much, Mike. We appreciate it. Yes. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.